In the winter season, around December 25th, the people celebrated the winter solstice. In the winter time, there is a period where there is no light. You are literally in darkness 24 hours of the day. And this stretches for a period of time. Now, could you imagine if you're living in Alaska or living in Canada or living in Norway and you don't have central heating and the cold is outside, it's darkness around you. People are dying from disease. It's a terrible time and, and every family would probably lose somebody or they would know of somebody dying from the cold and disease during that season. This is the winter solstice. And so when the sun starts to come out, the people now are looking at the sun as a life-giving force. And so during that time, a number of ceremonies were held in northern countries. Also in the north, they recognized that there was one tree that even that despite the cold would still remain alive. The evergreen tree, the fir tree. And so in some cases they would take this fir tree believing that there was powers of life within the tree and they would put it in their homes, set it there and put a light on the top of it or burn them in the front or they would make mistletoes and put them over their doorways, a type of what we would call ta'wiz or tamima. It is an amulet and they would hang the amulet over their doors, hang the amulets in their home, hoping that this fir tree, that this so-called life-giving force would protect them from the danger of the winter. And so their ceremonies developed around this. We also find in the ancient uh, northern countries, they had a secretive cult that spread throughout the far northern countries. One of the interesting individuals, and you can look this up if you can find it in the dictionaries or encyclopedias, is a man called Mithra or Mithras. This is a very mysterious character. And when you look at history, you find that this uh, individual called Mithra was born on December 25th. His day of the week was the seventh day of the week that we still call Sunday. He was supposed to be the son of the, of the sun god himself and they had a special sacrament made up of bread and wine and they would make this drink during this time and supposedly he sacrificed for the sins of the people. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? We understand that Isa alayhi salam, according to um, the different reports uh, of the different scholars, he was not born in the cold weather. History shows us that he was born during the warm weather. Even in the Christian traditions, they have the belief that the shepherds were tending their flocks outside. And in Palestine, you cannot keep your flocks outside in the wintertime in the evening. You bring them in because it's cool at night. In the story coming in the Quran, when we see the mention uh, in chapter 19 in verses 24 to 25, and we see the mention of the story of Mary, that when she felt the pain of the pregnancy, that, that, that the angel came to her and there she found a, a palm tree, a type of dates. And those who know, who have lived in the desert area know, it's, it's at the height of the heat that the dates become ripe. And so it's at that time that she gave birth to Isa alayhi salam. So from different points of view, different historical points of view and different religions, we understand that Isa alayhi salam was not born during the winter season. According to historical sources, 1647, it was prohibited in England to celebrate Christmas. The Christian church banned it because they saw Christmas as being a pagan holiday.